Hi YouTubers, so I am back to do another little reading of Goosebumps. So let me turn this fan off and just like hit me that it's on. in a little different position. So I'm just like comfy. Alright, so we are on chapter nine. We have this much we have to let's see how far we can get into it today. I was so stunned. I didn't say anything. I watched him run off moving awkwardly in the bulky horror costume. His purple tail dragged all over the pavement behind him. What did he want, Clay called. He and Luke were kneeling up to the house mirror's entrance. He, he said we should get out while we can. A stampered running over to them. I lost them for a moment and the blinding sunlight reflected off the glass building. Look laughed. These horror guys are great. He declared they really try to scare you in this place. Behind his glasses, Clay's eyes narrowed thoughtfully. He was kidding, right? He asked quietly. I mean, it was a drug one, wasn't it? I don't know, I told him. I guess so. I watched the horror disappear quickly behind a tall, blue, pyramid-shaped building. That's a stopped drop, Luke insisted. He's gone around scaring people all day. Maybe he was really warning us. Clay murmured, staring at me. No way, looked declared. He gave Clay a hard slap on the back. Stop looking so gloomy all the time, but this is a great place. You like to be scared, don't you? Clay's expression remained word, I guess, he replied uncertainly. I tried to tell Clay I was sure it was just a joke, but Luke interrupted. Hurry up, let's take out the house of mirrors. Let's have some fun before Mom and Dad show up and make us leave. He dragged Clay toward the entrance. I followed. We passed another no pension sign. As we made our way to the shimmering glass building. I saw the entrance. I stopped to read the yellow and green signs. It read, House of Mirrors to reflect. Before you enter, no one may ever see you again. Hey, wait up, I called the voice. They had already heard inside. I stepped into and in and found myself in a narrow, dark tunnel. My eyes were still filled with the bright glare from outside. I couldn't see a thing. Look, Clay, wait up, I shouted. My voice echoed through the low tunnel. I could hear them laughing up ahead. I dropped finally, ducking my head because the ceiling was so low, finally my eyes adjust to the darkness. The tunnel ended and I found myself in a narrow, a narrow corridor with the mirror walls and a mirrored ceiling. Oh, I uttered a low cry. I could see my reflection, dozens of them. I seemed, seemed to surround myself. I stopped for a moment and adjust my long black braid. It was always coming loose. Then I called again the boy again to the boys. Where are you? Wait up. I could hear them giggling somewhere up ahead trying to find us, look called. More giggling. I made 
my way quickly through the mirrored walkway. The walls curved to the right and then left. My reflections followed me straight, stretching deep into the mirrors. Dozens and dozens of me getting smaller and smaller, stretching to infinity. Hey, don't get too far ahead, I cried. I hear them giggling. <clears throat> then I heard a rumble of footsteps that seemed to come from another side of the mirror wall. I followed the condor, walking through slowly, carefully, until I saw a narrow opening up ahead. Wait right there. I'm coming through. I called. I started through the opening and blink. Hit my forehead on the solid glass. Ow. I cried out as the pain jolted across my forehead. Then down the back of my neck all the way down to my spine. I raised my hands to the glass and waited for my dizziness to fade away. Lizzie, where are you? Try to find us, I heard the look called. I hit my head, I shouted, rubbing my forehead. I could hear him and Clay laughing. Their voices seemed to be behind me now. <clears throat> I turned my back, but there was only mirrors behind me. No opening, my head still ached a little, but the dizziness had gone away. I started walking again more carefully this time. I kept both of my hands out in front of me so I wouldn't bump into anything again. I turned a corner, corner and stepped into a different room. To my surprise, the floor in this room was a mirror. The walls and the ceiling and the floor were all mirrors. I felt as if I were standing inside a mirrored box. I took a few careful steps. It felt so weird walking on my own reflection. I could see the tops and the bottoms of my sneakers as I walked. It made it really hard to walk. I kept having the feeling that I was going to fall into myself. Hey guys, where are you? I cried. No reply. I felt a sharp stab of fear in my stomach. Luke, Clay, are you there? I saw the males of my reflection move as I cried out. That's it about. But only one voice came out. My voice. Tiny and Shirrell. It's edge or I-L-L. Luke, Clay, silence. Don't fool the room, guys. I started. Where are you? Silence. No reply. I stared at the dozens of reflection on the sides of me. They all looked very frightened. Look, Clay, where have they gone? Chapter 10. I start, stared at my reflection as her as horrifying thoughts swept over me. Had the boys really disappeared? Had they fallen into some kind of trap? Were they lost in the maze of glass and mirrors? Ireland was too scary. I decided it was fun to be scared, but it was too hard to tell. <gasps> oh, me. But it was too hard to tell whether the scares here were fun but for real, are they dangerous in this place or is it just a big scary joke? Luke, Clay, I called to them in a trembling voice, turning all around, searching for an exit. Silence. Then I heard a muffled giggle. Then I heard a whispering voice nearby. Another giggle, louder this time. Luke's giggle. They had been playing a little joke on me. Hey, you're not funny. I screamed angrily. Really? Not funny? I could hear them both burst out laughing. Come on, find us, Lizzie. Look, called. What's taking you so long? Clay added. We're giggling. 
it seemed to come from just up ahead. Sliding my hands along the mirrors, I followed the hallway down the rock. I had to duck my head to slip through the narrow opening between the mirrors. I found myself in another small room surrounded by mirrors above the above above and below and all all sides the mirrors were tilted at strange angles so that my reflection appeared to bounce off each other as I moved. Where are you? I'm getting closer. I caught the light glue dim as I made my way through this room. My reflection darkened, the shadows grew longer. We can't see you, Clay called. Hurry up, Luke shouted impatiently. I'm going as fast as I can, I screamed. Just don't move, okay? Stay in one place. We are, Luke called back. How will we ever get out of here? I heard Clay ask him in a low voice. Ow. I pumped my head again on a section of clear glass. I pounced my fist in clay on the glass. This wasn't any fun. I decided it was too painful. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hurry up. Luke called from somewhere nearby. It's born ready in here for you. I'm coming. I muttered, rubbing my poor aching forehead. I turned a corner and stepped into a Rider room, no mirrors here, the walls were all glass. I stopped to glaze around, and there was Luke, finally he cried. Why couldn't you find us? I keep hitting my head, I told him. Let's get out of here. Where's Clay? Huh? Luke's mouth dropped open his breast. He spun around, searching for his friend. He was standing right there, he said. Look. I am in no mood for any more dumb jokes, I said sharply. Clay, where are you hiding? I'm not hiding, I'm already here, Clay called. I took a few steps closer to my brother and Clay came into view. He was standing in deep shadows behind a glass wall. His friends pressed against the pumping. How'd you get over there, Luke asked. Clay, Clay circled. I can't find a way out. I moved toward my brother, then stopped. I suddenly realized that he was behind a wall of glass. Luke and I were in different rooms. Hey, where's the opening? I asked him. Luke glanced around. What do you mean, Lizzie? You and I. We're not in the same room. I replied. I walked up to the glass wall, tapped on it with my fist. Huh? Looks fade, filled with surprise. He made his way over to me. Then he tapped on his side of the glass, as if making sure it really did exist. How'd that get there? He murmured. Clay started moving around his room, sliding his hands along the Pings of glass, searching for the opening. Stand right there, I told Look, I'll find a way into your room. I followed Clay's example. I moved slowly around the room, keeping a hand pressed against the glass. The light was still, my shadow fell over the glass as I walked. I could see my face reflected darkly in the glass. My eyes started back at me. They stared back at me, dark and desperate. Before I realized it, I had made a complete circle. I was back where I started, and there was no opening, no doorway, no way out. Hey, I'm trapped in here, Clay called. So I'm not told him there got to be an opening. Luke said, how did we get in. You're right, I replied faintly. We should be able to get out the way we came in. I began to search along the walls, moving quickly. My heart began to pound. 
uh, had a fluttering feeling in my chest. There had to be a way out. There had to be the pounded hard on the glass in order to. In the other room, I could see Clay jogging fed, fed Clay around his room, pushing on the walls as he moved. I went all the way around twice to stop. <sighs> There was no way out. I I'm trapped. I stumbled. It's like a box, a glass box. We're all trapped. Clay cried. Lick was still pounding the fence. Still pounding the fence. I can't speak. On the glass with his fist. Fist. Look, stopped. I cried. That is a help, and he lowered his fist to his sides. This is ridiculous, he murmured. There's got to be a way out. Maybe there's a trap door or something. I suggested. I began to search the mirrored floor. It was too dark to see well. The floor appeared solid to me. I would turn to the glass wall. This isn't much fun. I said glum, glumly, look, and Clay nodded. I could see they were both really frightened. So was I, but I decided I was two years older than them, so I could try to be the brave, brave one. I was feeling very brave though, utterly a word uh, I learned against, I leaned against the wall that separated Luke and me, and I leaned the wall started to move. I jumped back with a shout cry. The wall was sliding towards me, closing in on me. I looked Took another step back, glancing around frenchily. Frank, Frank. Let's see here. I can't even say it. I just can't speak today for some reason. I saw that all the walls were sliding in. Look and I look I cried. I turned to see him backing up to the walls. Clay God help me. They're sliding in on me too. <clears throat> look screamed. Each room must have its own glass walls. All three of us were trapped. We're a desperate with a desperate groan, I threw myself against one of the walls and tried to push it back, but I couldn't stop it. The box was closing in, growing smaller and smaller. We're going to be crushed. I cried. I'm going to get me something to drink. Chapter 11 Do something, please. Do something. Clay was screaming. Luke lowered his shoulder to the glass and struggled to stop it from moving, but he wasn't strong enough. <clears throat> the, rows, the walls kept sliding in on him. I backed up. My hands raced like a shield. Closer and closer, the glass was moving slowly. Silently, I backed up until my back hit the wall behind me. There was no worse to go. <coughs> do something. Somebody do something. Clay's terrified screams ran into my ears. 
the glass it's squeezing me looks shrieked Lizzie I I can't move a shot or two panes of glass pants panes of glass began to press in on from army from all sides above and below too I suddenly pictured one of these cross cars you know the parts that are crashed into into a perfect square big compactor machines my entire body shuddered as I realized I was going to be crashed into a perfect square too ow I cried out as the glass raced down on me Somebody help, I tried to scream, but my voice came out in my throat. Yup. I was getting hard to breathe. Gl glass moved in tighter and tighter. I gasped for air. I tried to push with all my might and kiss the glass, but it was no use. I was being crushed into a human square. <coughs> Chapter 12 I couldn't hear Luke or Clay anymore. I could only hear my gasping, choked breaths. I shut my eyes and felt the floor dropped away. And before I realized I was, before I realized what was happening, I was falling, falling rapidly down. I opened my eyes in time to see the glass wall, walls roll above me. As I slid down, down, down through an open clutch. And in a few seconds, I was back outside. I landed, set it up on the glass with a gentle thud. Looking clay <coughs> came sliding out behind me. For a long moment, we sit on the clutch grass. Blinking in the bright cell, not staring at each other in disbelief. We're okay, Clay in said uncertainly. Finally, breaking the silence, he slowly climbed to his feet. His round face was bright red, and his glasses were crooked cro and nearly fallen off his nose. We're all okay. Luke let out a laugh, a gleeful laugh. He stood up and began jumping up and down for joy. I didn't exactly feel like jumping up and down. I was still picturing the crushed car. Luke reached down and grabbed both of my hands, pulled me up to my feet. What should we do next? He demanded, grinning. Huh? Next, I cried. Are you for real? That was really scary, Clay said, his face still red. I thought we was going to be... be scratched flat. It was awesome, Luke declared. Once again, he was forgetting that a few seconds before he was screaming in tonal panic. It was way too scary. Clay murmured. Shaking his head. Clay's right. I agree. It was too scary to be fun. One more second. And don't you see? That's the whole idea of the crowd. That's how they scare you here. It's so awesome. They make you think that one more second and you're a goner. But it's all perfectly timed. They want you to be terrified, and then poof, you're okay. I guess you're right, said Clay, definitely. He pushed up his glasses and then rubbed his chin. We're not going to get hurt or anything. Look, continue this as an amusement part. Remember, they want you to come back again and again, so they're not going to really hurt anybody. 
maybe glaze it, but look, what if they mess up? I ask them. What if the machines get goofed up? What if the timing gets off? Let's say the floor underneath us got stuck. Then what? Luke didn't reply. He stared back at me thoughtfully. Well, what would have happened to us if the floor had dropped away at the right moment? I demanded. Luke scratched. That makes. They make sure everything works okay, he answered finally. Aroma asked, yeah, sure. Is it possible to really be scared to death? Clay asked me. A solemn expression on his face. I mean, I know it happens in books and movies, but does it happen in real life? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe, I replied. I bet people could get scared to death in that house of mirrors. Clay continued seriously. No way. Luke insisted. Listen to me. This is just a place for fun. Scary fun. He was watching, watching something over my shoulder. I turned to see one of the guys in a green horror costume walking by, carrying a huge banquet of blood wounds. Luke hurried up beside the horror. Hey. Has anyone ever died here at the park? Luke asked. The horror kept walking. The black balloons bobbed above his head. Only once. He told Luke. One person died here. Luke asked. The horror shook his green head. No. Not what I meant. What did you mean? Luke demanded. A person can only die once here. The horror said, no one has ever died twice. <clears throat> Let's see here. So we're on page 59. Chapter 13. So we've had 14, I mean, four chapters today. So I'm thinking whether I should read one more or not. <clears throat> I think I'm a little bit as it is since my throat seems a little scratchy. If the next chapter was a little shorter, then I might read it, but Let's see here. Okay, that's a simple of a different book. So 123, so basically 60 more pages to go. But I do hope you are enjoying this story time so far. Oh, excuse me. But if you have any ideas of ASMR or videos, just leave a suggestion and I might do them in the future. But not this weekend, but next weekend. I might have a little type of videos me and Wayne is 
gone on vacation so the kinds of videos that I might take so we'll see so I'll see you all later bye